and what is up YouTube hope you're having the nicest of days today so in today's video I'm going to be answering quite a commonly asked question among the KDP community and that is whether KDP is actually a passive income stream so in today's video I'm going to be answering that question and giving my honest two cents on the topic so guys first things first if you're new here then this will be the first time you see my face and I just want to say a disclaimer that my hair isn't always like this it's just because the barbers have been closed now for four months so I can't really get a haircut um, but yeah if you're new my name is Ben and I like to bring up videos like this one on self-publishing in general so if this is gonna be something that's interesting for you be sure to hit the subscribe button and of course if you enjoyed this video if you found it helpful in any way then do be sure to hit that like button it really does fire me up when I see a lot of likes on these videos it motivates me to make uh, some more videos because I know I'm helping you guys out or making enjoyable videos for you guys so it really is appreciated if you could hit that like button for me um, but without further ado let's jump into the computer screen for the topic of this video so people this is what we are all here for is KDP passive income and this is my honest truth within this video so if you're new here then just quickly be sure to check out this video it's on my youtube as well it's a free two hour tutorial on how to get started with low content publishing on kdp of course it's absolutely free and it should be linked in the top right hand side of the description if you are on your desktop and of course if you're an established publisher looking to try and make more sales on kdp then may i recommend the royalty accelerator course this is linked in the description below for 20 percent off of a limited time only of course this is my favorite course because it's so concise and actionable with the information it's contained within and it's a great community on top of that as well um so with that aside let's talk about what passive income actually is so we're just going to establish a definition and we just got the wikipedia definition of passive income so passive income is income that requires little or no effort to earn and maintain so so you can think of typical passive income streams as the stock market, you know, real estate, rental income, as it suggests below, um, and just generally businesses that don't require the earner um, to actually materially participate. So KDP is actually within that bracket. So actually, if we scroll down, it says on my notes that KDP, the KDP business model is actually passive income. And this is because you make the book once so you design the book you know you put all the content inside the book and you upload it onto kdp so you do all the initial effort once and then you get paid royalties for as long as your book is on kdp and now this is royalty income that's how it generally works and it is regarded as passive income just by the nature of how it works so yes in the strictest of senses your kdp business model is going to be passive income now however when you come to analyzing your actual business so whether your publishing business is giving you passive income is really just down to how you um, see passive income and it really is kind of a blurry topic it's not something that has one uniform definition uh, across the whole board it's literally just down to how the business owner sees it really so some people will say you know a few hours a week versus work would be passive some people might be more technical and be like that's not passive income because you're still doing work a few hours a week um and you still have to be using your you know your mental capacity to think about uh, what you need to do within your business a few hours a week so it so you know the definition differs from business owner to business owner so we're just going to go over across a few case study examples of different people and their different publishing businesses that I have on KDP. Um, so we're going to go over four people, and these are four hypothetical people, by the way. So we're going to go over person number one first. Now, person number one is called Atricanis. So Atricanis has a goal in mind. They just want to make a hundred dollars a month, and they're spending two months learning how to on the how to and creating great books. Um, and basically they've not touched KDP since that two month mark. So this is hypothetical, this is kind of a weird case, but yeah, they spent two months learning how to do it, making all the books, getting them onto Amazon. They've not touched KDP since. And they've comfortably been making $100 in royalty a month. So therefore hitting the goal of $100 a month. You know, um, so when I say comfortably making it, maybe they're going over, like the royalties are never the same month by month. They Sometimes they fluctuate. Um, so they're, they're fluctuating, but they're well over a hundred dollars. So that's what I mean by that. So the result of this means that their business is actually passive. If they're not putting any more work in and they're just getting a hundred 
dollars a month royalty or profit a month from their KDP business. And yes, this is passive. Atricanus came in wanting $100 a month and got it without spending any time working for it. So that's really good. Um, if that's what you want through your passive income, then there's kind of a, a way to do it. I mean, I have seen people go to 100 a month with just two months worth of work. So it is doable, um, but it's not something that a lot of people choose to do. Um, and there are several reasons as to why that might be. So Atricanis has invested all their time and maybe some money as well, learning on how to publish good books onto Amazon. So they would have invested some time going through YouTube videos, maybe buying a course, you know, um, and, and stuff like that. And they've got a knowledge base that has the potential to make them a lot more than $100 a month. So to stop a hundred dollars a month after learning how to do the whole publishing process is kind of a bit of anti, uh, anti counterintuitive. Is that the right word? Yeah. Um, so it's not, it's not really something that people aspire to. Like if anything, the goal is generally a lot higher than a hundred dollars a month. Um, so that's probably one of the strongest reasons to why people don't follow Atricanus on this. Um, the goals are different to Atricanus. So this is another big thing, of course. Um, maybe Atricanus just wanted the $100 a month so that they can feed their 12 cats that they have. And that's absolutely fine. I respect that. Um, people's goals are just generally different in life. However, a lot for a, a lot of other people, they want to maybe make as many customers as happy as possible um, with the books they publish. They want to build a publishing empire. They want to build a business that's able to feed themselves and future generations and stuff like that. Um, so they're not going to be following in their footsteps if these are the goals. Um, and of course, on top of all that as well, if you enjoy publishing, then you're not going to be following Atricanus. You're going to keep on publishing, aren't you? You're not going to stop after the two month mark just because you've hit a hundred dollars a month. If you really enjoy publishing, uh, and yeah, why not keep going? So that's kind of the downsides to Atricanus is although they've achieved passive income, it's not really something you want to aspire to be hitting a hundred a month. You want to go for a bit higher than that, of course. Um, so person number two is Abel Stein. So they've got more ambitious goals. They've got a goal of 10,000 a month, a hundred thousand a month or undefined. I put these three in a row because it doesn't really matter which one is which. Abel Stein is in the process. So they've not, he's not hit any of them at this point. He's publishing responsibly with a mask on his face. So he's not going to be spreading any coronavirus to his works as well. He's hustling day in and day out to get there with no external help. So he's doing it all himself, making the books, designing everything, the covers, the interiors, um, you know, coming up with the keywords, niches, and then publishing it onto Amazon. And he's seeing a gradual rise in profits. Um, well, in his case, in Abelstein's case, I'd say this is actually probably not passive. Although the KDP business model is passive, the actual work that he's doing is topping 60 hours plus a week. And that's more than what you'd get in a nine to five job. Um, and although he's receiving royalties for books that are already done, so he doesn't have to put any work into that, he's constantly working to keep up uploading books until he hits his goal. So in his instance, I'd say he's not passive. So just to review how he's working, um, he's got a good foundation for sure. This is how I would advise people going into KDP that they should start out as well. They should just hustle it out for the first few months. Um, because it gives you a good foundation getting comfortable working you know long hours to grind out the work um, and it really is common when you're starting out and have no money to invest because it's kind of popular knowledge that time is money um, and of course if you have the money then you can you know invest your money to give you back some time but if you don't have the money then you have to put the time in uh, in the beginning to really make things work out so um, as you can see below i've got a little um, bar graph here and this is a work day a typical work day for Abelstein and you can see they've got these seven different things and interiors takes up a lot of Abelstein's day it's a very very long day here and they've not got much time for anything else but they're working very hard towards their goals anyway which is good to see um, but it's not going to be sustainable too long term especially if you're working incredible amounts of hours um, so person number three is Rita now, Rita has exactly the same goals. It doesn't matter, 10,000, 100,000 or undefined. Um, basically, Rita is working to get there and she's not achieved any of those goals yet. She's hustling day in, day out. So the same as Abelstein, but the difference is that Rita outsources book creation 
to her VA and her freelancers and therefore does not create the books. She just literally outsources it to several workers that will create the books for her and then she'll do the rest. So she'll make the covers, you know, upload them, etc, etc. Um, and again, she's seeing a gradual rise in profits. Now, the very fact that she's outsourced part of the process literally makes her more passive than Abelstein because it means she's working less hours in a week. If we just go back to that same graph that I showed you with Abelstein, you can see that the whole green space is missing and look how much of a day is freed up to do something else now because she's outsourcing the interiors. Of course she can do the interiors alongside of VAs and therefore there'll be more work output but maybe she's got something more important to do at the time. Maybe she's got children, she's looking after her children or just something you know. So she's more passive in the sense that she has to work less hours. You know she's still uh, seeing that people feeding the business by outsourcing. This is going to be a much better route for sustainable passive income than Atricanis, whose aim was just $100 a month and has hit that with their own work and there's not feeding the business anymore. They're just leaving the books up there in the hope that they make $100 a month every month. With um, Rita, she's constantly feeding her business with new books uh, and stuff like that and ensuring that the business is growing and growing and growing over the long term. So if books stop selling uh, from her current portfolio and stuff, then she's always got more books to put onto the Amazon marketplace. So this is going to be more sustainable. And on the topic of sustainability, we get onto person number four who is called Cancosaurus. And Cancosaurus has exactly the same goals, 10,000, 100,000 a month undefined um, it doesn't matter she's not there yet but she has a lot of systems in place so she doesn't have just VAs making the book creations she has VAs literally you know come like managing her advertising she's got VAs making the covers she's got VAs finding niches to publish in next she's basically got a lot of systems in place she's even got a manager a manager VA managing the other VAs so she doesn't have to send out too many emails every day and she's seeing a gradual rise in profits and now this is the point where you can say a business is passive because really the only thing you have in your day if you can see from this bar chart is the managing and the uploading i put uploading in there because you're not supposed to share your account details out with anyone so along with amazon's terms and conditions you do have to do the uploading yourself so that'll be incorporated within your work day managing maybe a little bit sending a few emails and stuff like that but apart from that look at your whole work day. you've got nothing there you might you've got time to do something else you can learn how to speak french or something like that who knows um so this is a point now where it's not a hundred percent passive you still have to put your mind into thinking about oh, what are you gonna what email are you gonna send you know to your vas and stuff like that when am i gonna upload my books in the day but generally you've got a lot more time than both Rita and Abelstein did, person number two and person number three. So that's how you build a KDP business to passive income. And this is gonna be a lot more sustainable, as I said before, than Articanis, the first person who literally just aimed for 100 a month and just left it there. They, because you're gonna be feeding your business. And that's very, very important with KDP. Um, so that's generally the four people you want to aim for person number four if that is your goal of passive income at the moment person number three i'm at that stage um i'm still working a lot in a day um but it's kind of a process the more money you make of course the more you can transition to person number four if you choose to um of course it's going to be uh, cost you a lot of money you're gonna have to be making quite a lot of money to hire that many vas to run your whole business for you i mean if you're if you want to hire five vas for example um we should probably need to run your whole business um then you'd probably need at least two three thousand dollars a month spare just for your vas so it's kind of a trade-off essentially i mean you are literally trading a good portion of your profits from your publishing for a nearly passive lifestyle and obviously it doesn't matter if you're making a hundred a thousand a month for example because then three thousand isn't that much and obviously you're going to do that if you can um but yeah when you're starting out if you're aiming for your first ten thousand or something then it's going to be a lot more prominent there so it's not going to be something that you want to do early on it's something that you're going to be doing a lot later down the line but yeah essentially um if we go on to the mindset now um you do want to be freeing up your time there's a stigma against thinking about passive income and stuff like that and just hustling it out but it's good to free up your time by investing your money and reinvesting your profits um 
as this will eventually lead up to passive income if that is your goal. If it's not your goal, um, you still do want to free up your time because um, you always want to be learning within business. And obviously, if you do have extra time, then you have extra time to learn different things. Or you could just use the extra time, you know, to do things you like. So it's definitely good to free up your time and think about how you can make your business more passive because time is money. Uh, and if you're constantly working and you don't have any time, so you do want to free up your business. However, when you're starting out, um, it, you've got to bear in mind that it tends to be a result of hard work and perseverance. Um, if you are looking for passive income, you just got to remember that you need to put in a lot of hard work um, to begin with. There's an activation energy to any business. You're going to have to put in work for several months, several years. It, it, there's no real figure to it. Um, but don't expect passive income to come to you straight away. It does require quite a lot of work to begin with. You're going to be um, an Abel Stein for the next few months. And then you can transition into like a Rita when you start making money or if you already have money lying in your bank. And a Cancasaurus if you become beast mode and you're making quite a lot of money from publishing. So um, yeah, that's all, that's all I really have to say about passive income. I hope it clears it up a little bit. Um, and about the stages of passive income that come from KDP. Um, and yeah, of course, if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, be sure to give this a thumbs up. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.